Hi there, this is Manuel with Antagma, and today I want to talk about texture tiling. This is a very common problem sometimes in all of the DCCs. Today I want to use Blender, but it really applies to all the 3D programs. So if you are texturing an object, let's quickly create a plane for this, then create a new viewport, switch over to the shader editor, and let's create a new shader for this plane. And don't forget to switch over to viewport shading to see your texture. Now, if you want to use a tileable texture, I drag in a texture and connect it here. This will put the texture onto the grid. And now to tile it, I will need a texture coordinates node, texture coordinates, and I will need a mapping node. So I will use the UV coordinates and then multiply them by 5 and use these multiplied coordinates for the vector down here. And you see we get a tiled texture. But if you have a close look you see that although the borders are seamless we see the repetition quite drastically. And that is because the human brain recognizes these low frequency structures. So the repetition of the darkened light areas here, the larger structures. So let's see if we can find a way to make this less apparent. That is what I want to do today. But instead of using this texture to visualize better what I am doing, I will create a new image texture node and then just press the new button and create one of these color grids here. I think these are better for seeing what's going on. So with this in place, let's first implement tiling again. I don't want to use the mapping here. Instead, I want to tile manually. Let's make the viewport a little smaller and the very first step to tile something is to multiply the UV space. So to multiply the UV space by hand I will need a vector math. Set this to multiply and now take the UVs and I will connect a value node that makes it easier to set these three values all at the same time. So let's see if I connect the UVs directly to the base color you see this color gradient indicating the UV space. So down here we have black because here we have a U coordinate of zero and a V coordinate of zero and over here we have yellow because the first two components of the vector are one and we do not have any blue because the z component of the vector is empty it's always zero because we are dealing with 2d vectors and we are dealing with uvs now if i multiply this up say by a factor of five you see that this gradient moved to the bottom left corner and that is because the values are now ranging between zero and five so all the stuff over here is now in the range between zero and five we can directly connect this to the vector and then this to the color and we are back with our tiling texture. But this is only tiling because this node is set to repeat. As soon as I set this to clip, you see that we have a UV space of 0 to 1 only down here in the corner. Then the values are getting bigger. To really repeat the values, we want to use a second node and want to set it to modulo and we want to take the modulo with 1. That node gives me the remainder of the division by 1. So if I connect this here, and of course I have to put 1 down here, not 0 0.1, then you see that we again have our tiling texture, although this is set to clip, because now the UV space is repeated all the time. 0 to 1, 0 to 1, 0 to 1, and so on and so forth. Five times, because we are multiplying five times. So now we have tiling, and by using this value, we can exactly tell how many tiles we need. Let's stick to five for now. So to make the tiling less apparent, I want to have a way of rotating these tiles. And I could do so by introducing a rotate vector, a vector rotate. So let's take all these UV vectors and put them through this vector rotate. And if I now use this angle down here, you see all the tiles are rotating, but they are rotating around the bottom left corner. So let's put the center to 0.5 in U and V, and that makes them rotate around the center of each tile. Now I can rotate the tiles. But as soon as I rotate them, I get black borders because the tiles are not large enough once rotated to fill the entire square space. So why don't we create an option to scale them? And that is easy. We just need another vector math. We can just duplicate one of these vector math nodes. And we want to set this vector math node to multiply and just put it here before the vector rotate. Now this does not change anything because we are multiplying by one. But let me create another value node. And and connect here, put one back, and now you can see I can scale these tiles. 
But just as with the vector rotate, they are now scaling from the bottom left corner. That is not what I'm intending. So to make them scale from the center, we have to do a trick, basically exactly what the center is doing. We first move them over by 0.5, then we scale them, and then we move them back. So let's move them. We can move them by using a vector addition before the multiply, and we want to move them by minus 0.5 in U and V to move them over to the center. Now we scale them. As you can see, now they are scaled from the center but they are off center and now to move them back we just duplicate this addition put it after the scaling and change this to 0.5 and the third component can be zero in both cases because uv's are 2d vectors now we move it over then we scale then we move back and you can see now we can scale from the center and that is already quite nice because now we have control over the rotation of the tile and by rotating them, we can break the pattern a little more, as you can see. But because we now rotate the tiles, we see very apparent borders between the individual tiles. So what if we introduce some noise to make these borders less straight? So let's just lay down a texture node, a noise texture, to create some noise. And we want to create some noise in the space that we multiplied. So let's just use these vectors as an input to the noise. So this noise texture outputs values between 0 and 1, but I want to use this for distortion, so I need symmetrical values that range from minus 1 to 1. So let's lay down a map range node, connect the factor here, and let's change the range to minus 1 to 1, like so. Now we have symmetrical values, and now we can use this to distort our entire UV space. To do this, we want to add these vectors to the UV. And we can do this by using another vector math and set this to add. We want to add these values to the UVs after multiplying. So put the add here. Let's visualize what we are doing by just connecting this directly to the base color. Then we are seeing our UV space again. And now we want to add these noise values. But as we need a vector here, we want to first turn them into a vector by using a combine XYZ like so and just use the same value for X and Y but not for Z because we do not want to move them in Z. And now I add this and you see as soon as I do this we get noisy UVs because now the UVs are warped so to speak. But the effect is quite strong so why don't we introduce a multiply to make it less strong. So let's use a standard math node and put it after the map range like so and then this into the X and Y Immediately the effect gets less strong because now we are using 0.5 as a multiplier on these numbers. And of course I can go down and up and change the effect as you can see. And if we now use this for our texture, let's see what this gives. Now we have a distorted texture. So by using this, oh, and of course, don't forget to switch this to multiply. That will actually change the values in the right way. And now we can use this value to make the warping more or less pronounced. But the problem is that now the entire texture is warped because we are warping the entire UV space. But we only want to warp these borders. So we will use a trick to achieve this. What if we add these values to the UV space? Then we do the modulo to calculate the remainder and then we subtract the values again. Then we are back to where we started, but the borders are distorted because we took the modulo in the distorted state. So let's duplicate this add node, set it to subtract, and put it directly after the modulo. Now we want to subtract the same values that we added previously. That brings us back to our usual 3D space, but now with distorted borders. Very nice. This looks a lot better already. So now we have a lot of control because we can control the size of this noise to roughen up the borders between the tiles. And we have control over how strong this effect should be. And we can rotate all the texture tiles here and we can scale the texture tiles by using this value. So we have a lot more control over tiling than with a standard tool of Blender. But there's one thing that bothers me and that is that all the tiles are rotated exactly the same. And to change this, I could in theory just put a different value here for each and every tile. But that means that I need a different value for each tile to start with. Where can I get a unique value for every tile? Let me quickly visualize the output of this node here, this add node. And you see we get a distorted UV space here. This UV space has unique values everywhere, but we want only one value per tile. So what if we just duplicate this node and set it to floor? 
And now let's use these values and take the floor of the values. So the floor is the lowest integer that is lower than all the values. And if we now visualize what this gives, you see that you get a unique value per island. Because remember, we multiplied all these UV islands and then we add noise to get these borders. That means that all the individual tiles are in different value ranges. The values get higher and higher and higher. So if we do the flooring, we get one value, one integer for every tile, but a different one. And that is very nice. Now we have different values, but they are ordered and we want random values. So why don't we just use these values and put them through a white noise. So let's lay down a white noise, white noise, and use these values as a seed for the white noise texture. Now the white noise texture just outputs noise. Every pixel will get a different value. And if we visualize the output, we get random values now. That is exactly what we need. But we can use the float values, of course, because we just need floats. Now every tile gets a different float, and we can just use these floats for the rotation. So just connect it to this angle here, and let's visualize the entire network. And you see, now every tile gets a different rotation because it gets a different value and then a different random value through this noise node. The only thing is that we cannot control the amount of rotation. So let's introduce another map range here. And now these values range between 0 and 1 and the output range just controls how large this number is. That means by using this to max we control the maximum rotation of the tile. And we can go quite high here. And now you see you get something beautiful because now we have a texture tiling that is a lot better than the standard texture tiling. Of course, with this technical texture, you clearly see what's going on. But if you're using a high frequency texture, this will work. So let's compare. But before we do this, remember to go back to repeat here with the tiling method because sometimes it happens that we are going outside of the 0 to 1 UV bounds and then you get black artifacts. So let's go back to repeat. Now this is filled in. And now let's compare. Now this is tiling B4. Let me quickly connect the UV coordinates again here. This is a regular tiling. And you see the details are repeating. And now let's do the same thing, but with our newly created yield vectors. And you see this looks a lot more natural. And because it is a high frequency texture with a lot of detail, you don't see the borders at all. And we have a ton of control over the rotation of the tiles and of course the noise strength as you can see here. And this way you can create tiling textures that don't immediately show how they are made. So let's compare directly if I duplicate this plane and then move it over. Now let's go to the shader of this plane and duplicate it. And inside of here let's change it to use the old method. And you see that is a difference. This is how it used to look on the left and on the right you see the result of this new method. And I think this really works. Of course not for every texture but for ground textures and natural textures. So great, thanks a lot for listening. I hope you found this tip useful. And of course, you can create a compound out of this and save it to the asset manager, call it improved tiling or something. And then you can use it in your setups in the future. So thanks for listening and it is cheers and goodbye. If you like what we are doing, please consider becoming a Patreon. Not only for supporting Antagma, but for access to in-depth courses on topics such as particles, vellum, geometry nodes, and so on and so forth. And at this point, let me say thank you so much to all our existing Patreons. Without you, this channel would not be possible. Thank you.